After the war, virtually every nation with an air force had some form of radar for offence and defence. It was soon realised that radar could easily be detected and countered. New methods of seeing in the dark needed developing, and Farnborough set about the task with a will. Staying one step ahead of the new threat, the Eastern Bloc Alliance was the driving force. Today, pilots can aim weapons at targets simply by looking at them. They can see perfectly well in the dark and know exactly the status of their aircraft from the information displayed in the visor of their helmet. A combination of fantastic technologies developed at Farnborough has revolutionized military flying. This television camera has been fitted with a special device developed at Farnborough. This is an aerial view of a model airfield seen by our film camera. Now we light a candle and turn out the film lights. As one would expect, nothing. But here's what the low light TV camera sees. Well, the concept of night vision really came about as a consequence of uh, some work which we've been doing in the flight simulators. And in the flight simulators, we were routinely using cameras flying over uh, terrain models and uh, presenting the picture from that in front of the pilot. Uh, on TV screens. That led to the question as to why didn't we fly airplanes on TV pictures? Well, um, there were potentially some advantages to doing that, particularly if we were going to use cameras that were able to uh, to see when the human eye had started to, uh, to otherwise fail, in particular at night. Having proved that, uh, that, that really uh, the issues were to do with how much you could see, the field of view that you had from the camera. We came up with some ideas about uh, really how much you needed to be able to see and set about modifying uh, one of our hunters here that, that uh, was on our test fleet. This hunter has been fitted with a sensor in the nose of the aircraft and in the cockpit a head down screen which can also be projected into a head up display. During flight trials the test pilot's exterior view is blanked out by means of filters the objective being to prove the feasibility of high-speed, low-level night flying using this kind of visual information. In this particular instance, the information is provided by means of low-light television. However, the sensor with the most potential is thought to be infrared. One of the real difficulties that we realized is that uh, Flying a, uh, an aircraft with your head down in the cockpit as distinct from looking out was largely unnatural. The solution for that was to, uh, to actually take head-up display technology, which was used for instrument-only flight displays, and uh, to put the TV picture onto that. The problem with it was that the camera being fixed, you couldn't see around the corner. You had no idea what you were going to run into as you turned the corner. We tried slewing the camera, that was hopeless, it, it was disorienting. And so one day they noticed that uh, we were playing with night vision goggles and the, um, the flight observer said, if I borrowed some of your night goggles, I could look round the corner and tell the pilot, it's all right, there isn't a mountain there. And that would be very useful, so we did that. And after a while they said, these are wonderful, we could even fly an aircraft on night vision goggles. Having now got a TV picture on a head-up display and the NVGs mounted on the head, uh, you, you were getting something to approaching the best of both worlds. You had a very good high-quality image forward of the aircraft and uh, perfectly good uh, awareness uh, information by scanning your head around in the cockpit. The next step was to uh, look at images in other spectra and thermal imaging was a new technology which was uh, being developed and uh, was just coming to the point where images capable of being uh, of operating in a, in a fast jet environment were becoming available. As daylight fades and the crew receive their briefing, an aircraft is about to be wheeled out for takeoff. Housed in a pod in the plane's belly is a camera. 
a piece of electronic gadgetry that can greatly enhance the effectiveness of the aircraft and crew's operation. To the pilot, poor visibility can be inconvenient, time-wasting and at worst, risky. Even on a clear night, the ground below is just a jumble of lights. Once again, the aim was to, uh, to set the thermal imager up such that the image that you saw in the HUD was matched completely with the outside world. You saw it as one-to-one. -one. And uh, now when you look forward the, with the NVGs, you actually had the best of, really the best of both worlds. You had the thermal image, so all the heat energy uh, in uh, common terms coming from, uh, from the scene, as well as the visual spectrum. And as luck would have it, in many circumstances, when the visual spectrum is poor, i.e. when the moon and the stars are behind clouds as a heavy overcast, the thermal image can often be very good. And when the thermal image is less good, very often the visual spectrum is also quite acceptable. So we really were heading towards a 24-hour capability. One of the problems with uh, uh, using a combination of IR and uh, helmets, low-light TV helmets, uh, goggle sights, is that the pilot with a goggle sight would normally be looking out of the cockpit into the dark. If he turns his head into the cockpit, the lights are bright, uh, and therefore the TV tends to, uh, low-light TV goggles tend to overglow. And RE developed a system uh, which combined the low-light TV goggles the, the, with the night vision system by changing the colour of all the presentations in the cockpit from white to green. This was a major step forward and it uh, was used extensively during the Falklands campaign when the technology and the development was, was still uh, very new and some of my people at Farnborough were out on the ships converting the cockpit lighting of helicopters from white to green actually on the way to the Falklands. And I thought it was magnificent that the military were ready to use this totally brand new technology in an operation so quickly. The RAF has long had the capability to attack targets at low level by day. One of the most important developments in the fast jet cockpit has been the use of infrared sensors to fly at low level and find targets at night. This has given the Air Force a major step forward in fast jet capability. These scenes were recorded on a dark winter's night on an RAE test aircraft flying low over mountains and valleys. Usually, these systems only look straight ahead, but now, work at RAE has resulted in a night vision system for helicopters with a much wider viewing capability. A tracking device above the pilot's head ensures that the thermal image camera points in the direction in which he wants to look, an important plus for a night flying helicopter. At the same time as these various aids for the pilot were being developed, it was realized that much of the same technology, if married together, could form the basis of an extremely accurate bomb aiming system. Infrared thermal imaging combined with laser technology and television guided bombs resulted in the RAF having the most precise bomb targeting equipment in the world. It became known as Tiled and was soon to prove its awesome capability. Tiled, a thermal imaging airborne laser designator, uh, developed during the mid 80s. We actually had two pods in, in development. First, a uh, tiled pod was flown on the, the Nightbird Buccaneer and towards the end of 1990 that was all proven technology in these A-model um, pods. At that time the, uh, the Gulf War was brewing up and the decision was made to actually deploy tile to the Gulf and child was de deployed to the Gulf for use on, on the tornadoes or a number of tornado squadrons. Now the problem with this device is it has a very very small field of view so if you are trying to find something we don't know exactly where it is if it isn't in the picture you have to try and rate, relate what's on the picture to what you're seeing out the side of the cockpit. If he had a helmet device he could then effectively just look at what 
he could see. Press the button and then the pod would go and look at the target. And so we then, having effectively looked at its utility in the air-to-air -air scenario for pointing missiles, looked at what the problems were at making this happen, this, 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 this concept reality. And um, after a period of a few years, we had a system that largely worked. And so uh, the, the search was done on, really, I suppose, as to, as to what, what aeroplane was this going to be fitted to. And at that time, the Jaguar aeroplane was being upgraded um, to really fulfil its uh, a continued mission uh, requirement for the RAF. And really where we are today is that um, the aeroplane is being fitted with the technology um, and it's flying now and um, it will be in frontline RAF service next year.